Hello YouTube and welcome to Heathen Hacks. Today we're going to make our own power bank using the JX887Y charging module. It has a dual female USB type A for output and a single female micro USB type B for input with flashlight function and a battery level indicator. This is going to be a two-part video since I still don't have some of the necessary things in order for me to complete it. But rest assured this is going to work even without those things. According to this website, with parallel cells, capacity in amperes per hour and runtime increases while the voltage stays the same. So, 4 pieces of 4.2 volts 3000 mAh batteries will yield about 12,000 mAh while having the same amount of voltage. Also, if you are planning on making one yourself, I have included some helpful links about battery safety and calculations on the description down below. Let's go! So, here are the things that we need. The JX887Y charging module, some 18650 lithium-ion rechargeable batteries, I will be using the LG HG2 which has 20 amps of constant current and 35 amps of pulse current load, 3000 milliamps of nominal capacity, 3.6 volts of nominal voltage, and 4.2 volts of full charge voltage according to the specifications on its product page. A 4x18650 parallel battery holder or case, a multimeter for checking, a USB tester for testing, a soldering iron and soldering lead, and finally, a wire stripper, some solid core hookup wires, and some heat shrink tubing which I forgot to include in here. Okay, here is the charging module. We're going to solder some hookup wires onto the positive and negative terminals of the module of course. But first, we're going to test all the batteries and make sure that the battery holder or case is working as intended. Just gonna push the terminals back a little bit so that we won't have a hard time removing the batteries later. Now, we're going to use the multimeter to check the battery levels. First one is 3.92 volts. Second one is 1.17 volts. Third one is 3.93 volts. And the fourth one is 3.92 volts. The second battery seems to have less charge than the other ones. So we're going to need to replace it with another battery which I luckily have because I only ordered two pairs and it's buy one take one apparently. We need to check the replacement battery first though. 3.93 volts. Alright, perfect. Remove the batteries, turn the multimeter off, and then proceed on soldering. As I have mentioned before, we're going to solder some hookup wires onto the positive and negative terminals of this charging module. Also, if you're going to be soldering onto a large-ish pad, use a bigger soldering tip for faster heat transfer. And as you can see here, I did not do that because I forgot. <laughs> Okay, next is the negative or ground terminal. Apologies if you can see it clearly, I did not notice that it was out of frame. Next up is the battery holder. Alright, now we're going to need to cut a piece of hookup wire to connect onto the battery holder terminals. Just gonna eyeball it. Okay, cut another one with the same length. Just like that. Then use our stripper to unsleeve both of the wires. There you go. Then, we need to check if our shrink tubing will fit just to make sure. Okay, now we're going to solder wires onto the ground terminals. We need to add some soldering lead to them first though. Just like that. Now, we can finally proceed on soldering the wires. Next, add some heat shrink tubing before soldering the next terminal to lessen the potential of shorting it. Then, I'm going to use my torch to shrink the tubes. After soldering wires and adding the shrink tubes onto the ground terminals, let's do the same onto the positive ones. And my iPod died. While I was charging my iPod, I have finished soldering the wires and added some shrink tubes onto the positive terminals of the battery holder. Also use some super glue for it not to move around. Now, I need to solder the module onto the battery holder while charging all the batteries. Charging up! Alright, soldering is done! And now for some final testing. I will try to charge my 26650 vape battery and a Lenovo tablet. 
Okay, let's put the batteries in. As you can see here, I have already labeled them. Make sure that we put them on the right orientation. Let's check the battery level. It's fully charged. Then, connect the other charger to the USB tester. Wait a sec, just gonna turn off the flash. There you go. Let's uh, insert our USB tester and plug in the charger. It's giving out approximately 0.5 amps. That's good. Now, I'm going to remove this and put the charger back in. Plug in the tester onto the other USB port and add another USB cable. And let's charge our tablet. Currently charging at about 1.4 amps. Can't really test if it can output 2 amps though, because I don't have any devices that has a quick charge function or needs 2 amps of current, except the motion door display of course. Click here to check it out. But I have already dismantled it. So yeah, this may be a pretty janky looking setup right now, but hey, it works. Also, here's the flashlight function. Just click the button for about 2 to 3 seconds to activate the LED. And that's it. Thanks for watching and see you again next week for part 2.